Hey guys, this is Nia. Welcome back to my channel. Today I will be painting a misty landscape. It's very easy to paint along for beginners, so I hope you guys give this a go. I'll just write down the colors that I use so you can follow through if you want to paint with me. I put down the colors that I'm going to be using for the background I then wet my paper if you have a larger size brush this would be much easier but I only have my size 8 at the time a flat brush is also very ideal but in this case um, of just wetting your paper you can use any brush but of course the smaller your brush the faster you would have to work because you don't want any places to dry off first Now I'm switching to a flat brush. This is a Reese brush size 10 and as I mentioned before if you have a bigger size brush this would make your life easier but this is the only one I have on hand. Here I'm just taking a little bit of the yellow ochre and I'm placing it at the top to make a light gradation with this color only on the top half of the page. So slowly going lighter as you go to the bottom. I'm taking some burnt umber and I want to do the same thing as the previous color but this time from the bottom of the page I also want to create a smooth transition between the burnt umber going to burnt sienna then leaving a lighter wash around the middle of the page. And I'm just going to work the paint until I'm happy and satisfied with the distribution of paint. As your paint colors are slowly meeting together in the middle, I'm just going to smooth out the transition but I still want the middle to be slightly lighter than the top and the bottom. And once you're happy with it, I'm just going to leave it to dry or if you want to make the process faster, you can also use a hair dryer. After your paint is completely dry, now I'm just going to mix ultramarine blue and black to create a muted blue and I'm just going to start painting some of the mountains. If you're a little bit scared of putting down the blue color, you can mix your paint to a diluted consistency and you can build up the colors later on. We actually want this part of the painting to be quite light because it's at a distance and it's further and the further it is, the less you can see of the actual object. Basically, I want the top of the mountain to be more visible, so I put more water as I get to the bottom so it slowly disappears into the background. And I'm just going to keep on doing this layer by layer of the mountain. And for this one, 
I'm using more black because it's getting more to the surface and it's a, a little bit more visible than the mountains at the back. You also want to make sure that each layer of the mountain is completely dry before you add on to the other one or else the paint might bleed out into each other and it won't look as crisp as it should be. As you get closer to the foreground, I also want to make my mountains to look a little bit more jagged. This is to suggest that your eyes can see a little bit more detail of the mountains and as it's getting closer, you can start seeing the trees growing out. It's also up to you if you want to make the mountains a little bit more further apart or closer together because it just means that there's a difference in height or in distance. And since the mountain now is getting even closer to the foreground of the painting, I want to also make my paint a little bit more concentrated so you can see more of the trees. At this point though, to still create the misty atmosphere, I'm still going to make sure that the paint blends into the background as it gets to the bottom. As we get even closer, I'm changing the color a little bit by adding some burnt sienna into the black and I'm also switching my brush to a size 2 where I can start painting more details of the trees. I'm just going to do mostly pine trees here, make sure that the height of the trees varies so it looks more natural because all trees are different. This part of the painting and the ones after this are going to take quite a long time to do because we are painting a little bit more detail so make sure that you take your time while painting and don't rush anything if you're not comfortable rushing your work so you like the final outcome in the end and while we're in the middle of doing this to tell you the truth this is actually quite an old painting that I did at one point in time I painted and filmed a lot in one day and I guess I kind of forgot about this one and since I've been busy recently and I haven't been able to record or filmed anything for YouTube I luckily found this footage and I decided to post it today but I hope either way you guys will still enjoy this one I know I don't usually do landscapes but from what I've gathered from comments a lot of you are new to watercolor and I just thought this is an easy painting to follow along and I decided to share this one with you guys in the end. Okay, so I'm going to leave you guys here and come back later once we're going to start painting the foreground. Thank you.
after you're happy with this layer, I'm just going to leave it to dry and then I want to add a little bit more detail behind it for more layers and added depth. I'm just going to use diluted paint to suggest that the trees are behind this layer. While we wait for this paint to dry, I'm also going to add a few more layers at the back wherever you want to add a little bit more detail and I'm also going to define some parts of the mountains to make it more visible. Just do this according to what you feel best suit the composition that you have. Sorry, I think I lost some footage on this part of the painting, but basically as we're getting close to the foreground, I'm just going to explain to you what I did for this part. I just used diluted paint again and this time I painted the trees lightly and loosely so the foreground wouldn't look too flat. And I repeated the pine tree shapes and I also changed the consistency of my paint subtly so it has different depths. And now we're finally painting the foreground. For this part, I want to paint the land first. And I use a very thick consistency paint for this one because I really want the foreground to pop up the most. We're basically painting silhouettes of trees on top of that. And because we're going to paint thin branches and different trees and bushes, make sure that you are using a small brush that you are comfortable with and you can control quite easily. As you can see, I play a lot with the length of the tree and how thick and thin the branches are. But on top of that, you can also vary the density and the size of the leaves, which is essentially just dots with the tip of your brush. To do this, if you want to make the leaves more sparse, I suggest using the very tip of your brush to create small dots and don't paint too much of it so leave some space in between and if you want denser trees or trees with bigger leaves you can press more with your brush so you create thicker shapes. I also like to add on some wild grass and bushes. Just add anything you can think of at this stage. You can really paint anything as a silhouette. I think that's all I have to say for this painting. I hope you guys give this a go. It's one of those simple and easy paintings to do when you have free time. So I hope that you give this a go and try it out for yourself. And before I go, I would also like to tell you guys that I will be taking a break from YouTube for a couple or a few weeks because I will be out on holiday to Japan, which I'm super excited about. And I hope I can come back with some eye candy montage videos and preferably an art supply haul with, of course, more Japanese food illustrations because I'm obsessed with Japanese food. If I can, I'd just love to share a bit of my holiday with you guys. So when I get back, the videos will most probably be related to Japan for a while or at least that's what I plan on anyway. If that's not your cup of tea, then I totally understand. That's fine, but I think something different once in a while would be fun for this channel. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video. As usual, have a good day or night depending on where you are from. 
and I'll see you again in a few weeks time. Bye.